Now imagine, if the world were to suddenly plunge into a catastrophic event, where would you go? Where could you find shelter that offers not just protection, but the ability to survive for an extended period of time? Well, around the world there are special structures designed for exactly this scenario. These are the Doomsday Bunkers, fortresses designed to withstand calamities that could potentially wipe out most life on the surface of the Earth. From the chilly shores of Svalbard to the opulence of the Czech Republic's Oppidum, let's explore 10 of the most fascinating Doomsday Bunkers around the globe. Let's begin our subterranean journey in Corsham, Wiltshire, UK, where the Burlington Bunker, also known as Site 3, resides. This underground city is a marvel of Cold War-era engineering. Built in the 1950s, when the threat of nuclear war loomed large, the bunker was intended to be a refuge for the UK government to continue operations in the event of a nuclear disaster. Its scale is almost hard to comprehend. The site spans over 35 acres, carved into a former bathstone quarry, and is estimated to have over 60 miles of roads, complete with traffic lights. It was designed to house up to 4,000 government officials and staff and was fully equipped for long-term living. There were dormitories, offices, kitchens, a water treatment facility, and even a hospital with an operating theater. Perhaps the most intriguing feature of the Burlington Bunker was the BBC Broadcasting Studio, equipped to transmit a message from the Prime Minister to the survivors of a nuclear attack. This city beneath the city stands as a testament to the lengths humanity will go to ensure its survival. If we travel to the remote Arctic Svalbard archipelago in Norway, we'll find a bunker with a different mission. Not to protect humans, but to protect something just as crucial. Seeds. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault, sometimes called the Doomsday Vault, is designed to safeguard the seeds of the world's food plants in the event of a global crisis. The vault is buried in a mountain on the island of Spitsbergen, around 800 miles from the North Pole, and was constructed to be resistant to all manner of global disasters, including nuclear war. Its remote location and permafrost keep the seeds naturally frozen, reducing reliance on mechanical cooling systems. Inside, the vault can store up to 4.5 million different seed samples. As of now, it houses nearly a million, representing hundreds of thousands of plant species. In a way, the Svalbard seed vault is like the insurance policy for our planet's food supply, providing a fail-safe, secure seed storage facility for the biodiversity that future generations will rely on for sustenance. Moving on, our journey takes us to West Virginia and the United States. Nestled beneath the lavish Greenbrier Resort, a historic hotel dating back to 1778, lies a relic of the Cold War era, the Greenbrier Bunker. The bunker was constructed in the late 1950s and early 60s under the codename Project Greek Island. Its existence was one of the US government's best-kept secrets for three decades. The bunker was designed to hold the entire United States Congress, both the House of Representatives and the Senate, in the event of a nuclear war. Covering an area of over 112,000 square feet, the bunker includes dormitories, a cafeteria, a hospital, meeting rooms for the House and Senate, and a broadcast center from which the President could address the nation. It was maintained in a constant state of readiness by an on-site team until its existence was revealed in a 1992 Washington Post article. The next stop on our journey is in the quiet village of Carp, Ontario, Canada. Here lies an ominous four-story, 100,000-square-foot underground bunker aptly named the Diefenbunker, after Canada's 13th Prime Minister, John Diefenbarker. Built during the Cold War, between 1959 and 1961, the Diefenbunker was designed to withstand a 5-megaton nuclear blast from 1.8 kilometers away. Inside, the bunker's layout is a veritable labyrinth, designed to house 535 government officials and military officers for up to a month. It features living quarters, a large cafeteria, a hospital, and even a CBC radio studio. The bunker was decommissioned in the 1990s and now serves as Canada's Cold War Museum, offering a stark reminder of the anxieties and fears of the not-too-distant past. What's more, it's the only known Canadian doomsday bunker that was built to house Canadian officials in the event of a nuclear war. It stands as a testament to the once tangible fear of nuclear annihilation that pervaded the globe during the Cold War. Vivos Indiana in the United States is our next stop. Built during the height of the Cold War in 1961, this one-time AT&T relay station is the epitome of 21st century doomsday preparation. 
It was acquired by the Vivos Group, a company specializing in building and maintaining private and community survival shelters. Covering a massive 80,000 square feet, this bunker is hidden beneath a sprawling, nondescript security-fenced surface compound. It boasts of its own medical and dental facilities, fully equipped gym, pet kennels, a shop, and even a prison cell to handle unruly occupants. With 12 and a half foot high ceilings and its own self-contained water and power generation system, this bunker can comfortably accommodate up to 80 people for one year without needing any supplies from the surface. Shifting our gaze to Europe, we find ourselves in the Adam Ondras Bunker in the Czech Republic. Named after the nearby hill, the Adam Ondras Bunker is a relic from the era of the Iron Curtain. The bunker was built during the 1950s and its primary function was to serve as a communication center for the Czechoslovak army. But the fortified bunker was also designed to protect against a nuclear attack. With a floor area of over 2,000 square meters spread across several levels, it could hold hundreds of military personnel and civilians. Unlike some of the other bunkers on our list, this one hasn't been converted into a hotel or sold to private companies. Instead, it remains a chilling monument to the Cold War era. The bunker is now open to the public as a museum and serves as a stark reminder of a time when the threat of nuclear war loomed large over the world. From the outskirts of the Czech Republic, we return to the United States, Kansas to be precise. Here lies one of the most luxurious doomsday bunkers imaginable, the Survival Condo. This isn't your average bunker. It's a converted Atlas missile silo, a missile launch complex built during the Cold War era to house and launch the Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. After being decommissioned, the silo was purchased and transformed into an opulent survival shelter by Larry Hall, a real estate developer. The survival condo spans 15 floors, with seven of them dedicated to private residences. These full-floor units can house six to ten people and include all the amenities of a modern home, including high-end appliances, home automation, and even pet parks for the furry family members. The complex is self-sustaining, with facilities for food production, water purification, and air filtration, among others. In addition to these, it boasts a swimming pool, gym, cinema, and even a school. The survival condo is prepared for any disaster, from nuclear war and pandemics to solar flares and civil unrest. Moving over to the mountains of North Carolina, we encounter an entirely different type of survival shelter. The Doomsday Castle, as it's aptly named, was made famous by the National Geographic reality show of the same name. Built by Brent Sr., a retired army officer and his family, the Doomsday Castle is a unique blend of medieval architecture and modern survival engineering. It's constructed atop a mountain and incorporates an array of defenses, including a drawbridge, portcullis and thick stone walls. The castle is designed to withstand disasters such as hurricanes, riots and EMP attacks. Inside, the castle contains various survival amenities like a rainwater collection system, solar panels for electricity, and a smokehouse for preserving food. The structure itself is designed to be sustainable in the long term, utilizing resources available on site, such as a quarry for stones and a forest for wood. The Doomsday Castle is a testament to the family's dedication to self-reliance and preparedness, illustrating the length some are willing to go to ensure their survival. Shifting back to Europe, we land in the Czech Republic, home to one of the largest and most exclusive private bunkers in the world, the Opedum. This extraordinary facility stretches over 323,000 square feet, with a two-level underground component and a residential estate above ground. Initially constructed in the Cold War era, the bunker was designed to withstand nuclear and chemical warfare. Its above-ground mansion is luxurious, complete with a beautiful park, a swimming pool, and even a helipad. However, the real marvel lies below the surface. Underneath the estate is an expansive bunker featuring a plethora of amenities. These include a conference room, a surgical facility, a private vault, and even a wine cellar. The Oppidum even has a plan for long-term underground living, featuring its private collection of survival gear and sophisticated life support systems. It offers the potential to live lavishly while simultaneously being ready for any catastrophe that may strike. Our final stop takes us back to the USA, in Montebello, California to be precise. Here, the Atlas Survival Shelters Company produces some of the most innovative and accessible personal bunkers on the market. These shelters are designed with practicality and durability in mind. 
made from galvanized corrugated pipe, they can be buried up to 42 feet underground, offering excellent protection from nuclear, biological and chemical threats. They come in various sizes, from small units for individuals to larger ones for families, capable of housing multiple people for an extended duration. The interiors of these bunkers are meticulously designed to provide a home-like atmosphere. They include sleeping quarters, kitchens, living areas, and even storage spaces. In addition to the standard features, customers can customize their bunker with options such as a decontamination room, an escape hatch, or even a gun vault. With Atlas survival shelters, preparedness for the unknown is more attainable than ever. And as always, thanks for watching. It's intriguing, isn't it? Each of these doomsday bunkers provides a unique take on survival, blending practicality, luxury and at times a bit of eccentricity. These places were designed to protect against the worst imaginable scenarios, and while they may represent fear of the unknown, they also symbolize human resilience, ingenuity and our relentless pursuit to endure against all odds. In the end, while we all hope never to need such shelters, their existence stands as a testament to our will to survive, persist and carry on, no matter what the future holds. Until next time.